Hello and welcome to this lesson today all about STC ratings or sound transmission class. So if you have been looking at soundproofing, you have probably come across this system of rating soundproofing assemblies or walls, ceilings, floors, things like that. In this video, I wanna demystify some of the uh, hoopla around STC ratings and talk about the science behind them and give you a better understanding of what in the world they are and how you can use them to your advantage when building your soundproof studio. Before we jump in, I wanna let you know that I have a free soundproofing workshop. If you are going down the rabbit hole of YouTube videos on learning how to soundproof, then this workshop is for you. It will give you 45 minutes of straight teaching, teaching you how to build a soundproof studio, and I go in depth in how I built my own soundproof studio. So check that out at soundproofyourstudio.com. It is free, and you can sign up right away and watch it. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so STC stands for Sound Transmission Class, and it was created back in the 1960s by the American Society of Testing and Materials. And it essentially was trying to create a system so that builders could create houses and offices where speech would not be heard through the walls. It was not created for recording studios. However, we have seen in marketing and things with different soundproofing companies that the STC rating is prominently shown as STC of 55, STC of 66, 75 plus, all these things, which get your gets your heart thumping and making you think, oh yeah, I got the most soundproof wall ever. The truth is that this system was actually created for just the human voice, meaning anything below 125 hertz uh, was not measured at all, meaning your low subwoofer bass, any bass for that matter, kick drums, things like that, uh, aren't even accounted for with the STC wall system. Also above 4,000 hertz, nothing is accounted for, but because those are such high frequencies, meaning they have short wavelengths, a lot of those short wavelengths don't have enough energy to get through standard walls, in which case your soundproof wall will be plenty great at those frequencies. All right, let's go over the basics of STC. So if you've never heard of this before, the higher the rating, meaning the larger the number, the better for soundproofing. The lower the number, the worst. So when you see an STC rating of 25, that's really not good. And when you see an STC rating of 50 and above, that's usually really solid for a starting place with building a soundproof wall, floor, or ceiling. So again, like I mentioned before, the main problem with STC is it was never intended for industrial applications like recording studios. So you need to be very careful when you're looking at STC ratings. Now let's take a little look at some charts from two different companies that I found that are trying to explain what an STC rating sounds like with human speech. So to start with, let's look at Acoustical Surfaces, which is a soundproofing company, and they had this chart right here, which was kind of interesting. They say that at an STC of 25, you can hear soft speech through the wall. At an STC of 50, you can slightly hear loud speech, but it is very, very faint. Here's another chart by a company called Indo. Now, Indo is a company I have looked into many times because they provide a uh, window insert that could help you in a more efficient and cheaply way of soundproofing a window. And they have this chart for STC ratings that also is similar to the last one, but it also shows you that there's no science behind what an STC rating means versus the outcome of the sounds that are allowed or not allowed through that wall. So let's take a look at this Indo chart. So they say that a STC of 25, normal speech is clearly heard, so me talking like this would be clearly heard through the walls, and an STC of 50, uh, loud music is barely heard. So you can see by these charts that there's really no clear definitive way to say that one STC rating will achieve certain desired results with your recording studio. Meaning if you have a loud band playing in there and you're like, I have a wall STC rating of 50, um, it's definitely gonna work. That's not necessarily true because all we know is that it's gonna help reduce uh, the speech 
that is heard through the walls. So if you have a singer in there, yeah, you're pretty sure you know what's going to happen. But as soon as you get a drummer in there and a bass player in there, all bets are off. Another useful tool with STC ratings is to understand uh, different wall systems. So this is a great way to understand which walls perform better. And in this example right here, I'm going to show you why your logical thinking might not be the right way and the STC rating can help show you how that is true. So this is a diagram that I created, but I borrowed it from Rodger Weiss's book, uh, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros. So if we look here, Rod shows that an adjacent wall, two adjacent walls built together will achieve an STC rating of 40. This means that the drywall is on the inside and the outside of the two walls sitting next to each other with an air gap in the middle. You would think that that would make it more soundproof. It's just logical. Okay, we have two walls together. It's going to be really, really strong. Now, if we look all the way to the far right, we notice that that is not true. With an STC of 63, uh, the only way to get that is to actually take those drywall pieces in the middle out and put them on the outside. So the scientific testing here has proven that the best way to construct soundproof walls is to actually put two layers of drywall on the outside rather than on the inside. So the STC rating there is helpful because it shows us that one wall is clearly superior than the other, regardless of whether speech or low frequencies and stuff like that are involved. So this is kind of the interesting way I wanted to explain that STC ratings are not as intuitive as you may think. They're useful in some regards, but in other regards, it's probably important not to get too hung up on them and not be sold sort of the snake oil tactic uh, of like, we have a really high STC rating because you know deep down, because you're smart, that your bass frequencies are not necessarily represented fairly by that STC rating. So in conclusion, I would say, number one, don't rely on STC ratings alone, but use them as a tool for comparison. Number two, make sure to remember that it does not include bass frequencies below 125 hertz. It only includes the speech frequency spectrum. And number three, understanding mass law and following good sound soundproofing construction techniques is your best bet for creating a soundproof room. Don't rely just on STC ratings alone and make sure to do your homework and follow channels like mine and things like that to understand how to build proper soundproof walls, ceilings, and floors, windows, and doors. All right, I hope you have found this uh, video and lesson enlightening. If you are interested in taking a deeper dive into soundproofing, check out that free soundproofing workshop I mentioned. You can go to www.soundproofyourstudio.com, sign up for free and watch that 45 minute workshop instantly and start learning in depth how to build a soundproof studio. All right, I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're listening on our podcast, thanks for listening. And I will see you next Monday, same place, same time. All right, see you later.